If you're selling on Shopify, you most likely are very confused about what you need to do to actually register your business. Are you required to register your business? Do you have to have an LLC? Do you have to have a seller's permit? And do you need a business license? This is all very confusing. And I wanna walk you through the exact requirements to operate a legal Shopify business. Now, the problem with a lot of the videos that I'm seeing on YouTube is that they are Shopify users sharing a lot of misconceptions and false information. This can be quite problematic because while these creators are intending to help, they actually are setting your business up for failure, tax penalties, and legal issues. Now, if you have Google, do I need a business license on Shopify? Then you most likely have come across these videos. I want to clarify a few things that are stated in these videos that are bad advice. Please do not follow this advice. I'm unfortunately going to get you in tax and legal trouble. Number one, I want to make sure that you understand Shopify states that you do not need a business license in order to sell on Shopify. However, that does not excuse you from your business registration requirements within your city, county, and state. Most cities and counties are going to require you to have a business license and have your business properly registered. So while you may open and operate a Shopify store without registering your business with your city and county, in most cities and counties, that's going to be a violation of their requirements for running a business. Make sure that you check with your own unique city and county. And if a business license is required, make sure you obtain one before starting your Shopify store. The next misconception that is being shared in these videos that I want to clear up, collecting sales tax from your customers without actually holding a seller's permit is in direct violation of tax laws and will put you in violation and subject to potential penalties and legal ramifications. Unfortunately, some of these videos are recommending that you collect sales tax and hold on to it just in case you are obligated to pay it later on. Now that we have cleared up those misconceptions, I wanna walk you through exactly what steps you should expect in most cities, counties, and industries when it comes to starting your business. So I wanna make sure that you understand to take all of your tax and legal questions to your state organizations that are managing those different departments or to a certified professional, a tax professional such as a CPA or a bookkeeper or an attorney. The advice on YouTube is really hit or miss, which is why I really try to always show you the legal documentation. A Shopify store is a business. The IRS views anything in the amount of $400 or more in net income as a business or a self-employed income and not a hobby. You may not test the waters. You may not wait until you have consistent sales or lots of revenue before you register your business. Now, it's a common misconception that registering your business and forming an LLC are interchangeable or are the same thing. When you first start earning income, you are automatically defaulted to what is known as a sole proprietor. A sole proprietor means that you and your business are one and the same. You are a single individual operating a business and you have not formed a separate business entity, such as an LLC. Now you are automatically defaulted to a sole proprietor and you then will claim your business income on your personal tax return. But this is not the end of the obligations as you are operating a business and you must continue onward. First, you're going to need to register a DBA, a doing business as statement. As a sole proprietor, if you are doing business and conducting your business under any other name that is not your first and last legal business name, then you are going to be required to register your doing business as name with your county clerk recorder's office. Doing business as names are also referred to as fictitious business names or trade names in many cities. The the next step is optional. If you choose, you may obtain an EIN, an employer identification number from the IRS. An EIN allows you to use that specific tax ID number instead of using your personal social security number on all of your business paperwork. Those of you that do not want to share your personal social security number with lots of other businesses and paperwork, then get an EIN. EINs are fast, easy, and free to obtain at irs.gov. Additionally, many financial institutions or payment gateways may ask you for an EIN. Next, you're gonna be required to obtain whatever seller's permits you are required to hold. 
So how do you know if you are obligated to collect and remit sales tax and in what states are you obligated to collect and remit sales tax? In order to determine from in which states you must collect and pay sales tax to, you first need to determine in which states you hold Nexus. Now, Nexus is established when you meet the requirements for a business presence in a state. There are two different ways that you can establish nexus in a particular state. Now, the first criteria is physical nexus. If your business has an office, an employee residing in or traveling to the state regularly, a warehouse, a distribution center, a third party affiliate, stored inventory, or a temporary physical business in the state, such as a trade show or a craft fair, then you hold physical nexus in that state. The state in which your business is registered is going to be a for sure state that you hold nexus in. Additionally, you can also hold nexus Additionally, you can also have nexus in a state if you meet the economic nexus standards. Once you reach a certain thresholds of sales within a state, then you have nexus in that state. These standards are different for every single state. Nexus is really confusing. It is completely overwhelming and confusing to look at, understand, and adhere to all the compliance issues and tax filings for every single state. So I'm gonna share with you a few tools that will help you to do it easier and actually make it manageable. Number one is going to be the tool within Shopify that notifies you when you are reaching Nexus for a particular state. Taking it a step further, there is a service called Stripe Tax um, and there's also a service called TaxJar. Now these are actually both the same company. Stripe Tax obtained TaxJar and Stripe Tax is the newer version of the product. And I think they're gonna be phasing out TaxJar eventually. What Stripe Tax and TaxJar do is that they monitor your Nexus status in accordance with all of the regulations for each and every state because it gets complicated, there are frequent updates, et cetera. Now, what they do is they import all of your data and they integrate into your Shopify store or a variety of other platforms. And what it does is it monitors when you are approaching Nexus for a specific state. Now it also allows you to compile all of your sales tax information into reports, generate reports for specific areas and file sales and use tax reports in all of the different states required on autopilot. This is gonna be a complete game changer for those of you that are operating on Shopify and making sales in multiple states. It is well worth the investment. Next, most cities and industries are going to require you to obtain a business license. A business license is obtained from your city and it is essentially a small amount of tax that you pay to your city in order to register your business. In most cases, you must obtain a business license before transacting any business. In some cases, certain cities may have different requirements or may give you a grace period, such as a 90 day grace period to obtain your business license and pay pay that tax. Next, check with your county and see if zoning clearance is required to have your business in operation. Even for home-based businesses, many cities and counties require you to get what is called zoning clearance, which essentially is just a sign off that you are okay with the city to conduct business in your registered address. Okay, you guys, I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments down below what business questions you have, and I'll try to point you in the right direction.